Christmas is a time to exchange presents, but the greatest present of all is love. And if people don't give each other that, then it really isn't Christmas. No matter what was under the Christmas tree when we were kids, we all knew it was the way that Daddy had to say, I love you. Well, here's one of the presents I want to give him this Christmas. This is for Daddy. If you should ever go to Sumner County, there's a good old man I know you'd like to meet. He'll welcome you and give you a glass of iced tea. And there's never been a stray dog on his street. He was born in 1897, and his first memories are of Christmas 1900. Though he may not be as strong as he once was, his memory is just as sharp. He remembers as a child going to San Antonio, Texas, and seeing Buffalo Bill Cody's Wild West show and the Indian attack with the wagons winding up in a circle. Then Annie Oakley came in, the real Annie Oakley, stood up on her horse and rode at a gallop, shooting backwards with a mirror. He remembers those news reports about two guys in North Carolina named Orville and Wilbur Wright that made the flying machine that crashed after actually leaving the ground and flying a few yards. He remembers most of those seeing the first car the first one that came to rise in Arkansas. And how the funniest part of all was when the car got stuck in the mud and they had to get a mule to pull it out. He remembers the sinking of the Titanic just like it was yesterday. The unsinkable, he mumbled. They should have known better. It was made by man. He stayed on the farm to support his mother till she died in 1915. Then he joined the army. And he's quick to lay this startling bit of information on you. There's one time and one time only since the War of 1812 that the United States of America was actually internally attacked by a foreign military power. That was in 1916 when Pancho Villa and his armed raiders crossed the border and burned Columbus, New Mexico, killing many people. Well, he was there. And he'll tell you that he spent three days and nights with General John J. Pershing's forces, with his head in Mexico and his feet in Texas, waiting for Villa to come back, but he never did. He went to France then, but the war was over when he got there. He said he met a lot of mamzelles. I said, how'd you get along? You spoke no French and they spoke no English. He said, well, I'd teach them a little English and they'd teach me a little French and we'd carry on from there. <laughs> Well, finally, he came back to Arkansas and married a beautiful young lady named Carrie Rivers. That's my mama. Yes, he married his one wife in 1920. For 62 long years, they've shared a bed. He forgot the bad things he did and the bad things done to him. And there's only precious memories in his head. There was cotton growing this year up on the highway by my place. He's planted it for the last 12 years there. Before that, he was planting cotton someplace else. He said that this year was his 74th year to plant cotton. And I figured that that was kind of a precious little crop. So we picked it, and I'm going to have a quilt made with it if anybody still knows how to quilt. Now, whenever I get home to Sumner County, I'm always stopping by just like before. He offers his best seat and a glass of iced tea. And 